Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great Taco Tuesday. We did get some good news that um, basically we've got Diggs, who is going to be um, on the pup list, but Mozzie, uh, Luke Schoonmaker, um, Overshown, all the guys that were injured are good to go to start training camp. We know C.D. Lamb that the Cowboys haven't had any contact on the contract for him and have done no work, while other teams have been actually quite busy. Um, Matthew Stafford, who got his deal about two years ago, wanted to have more guaranteed money and was holding in on training camp and let's go to the tape here and see what the Rams did to take care of that. It was from Adam Schefter. What's going on with Matthew Stafford? Laura, Matthew Stafford has decided to report to Rams training camp and the Rams are trying to finalize a restructured contract for him now where they're going to move up some of the guaranteed money. Matthew Stafford had his guaranteed salary this year of $31 million. There was supposed to be $15 million guaranteed next season, but the Rams are going to make some more guarantees to him to get him into camp to ensure that he was going to be there. There were people who thought that Matthew Stafford would consider holding out and not reporting mm. with the rest of the team today. With him scheduled to make $31 million this season, that is well below the going rate for quarterbacks like Trevor Lawrence, who just signed a deal that averages $55 million a year. The Rams recognize that, and they're now working with Stafford to boost the guarantees in that contract, and that made it possible for Stafford to show up today rather than hold out. Okay. So we have that news that they've decided, hey, let's take care of our guy who... All right, back on get up. We're still... Excuse me. Uh, who was going to hold out and so on. Jordan Love, who was 2-5 and five to start the season, who people will say is the greatest quarterback since Aaron Rodgers and Brett Favre, he is holding in and not going to work out until he gets his contract. And so... Um, they're working feverishly to get his deal done. Dak Prescott, on the other hand, he's not holding in. He's planning on being there and practicing, and we give him all kinds of shit. But we're hearing that his contract could be north of $65 million. Let's go to the tape on this. One day away from the Cowboys reporting to training camp and all these questions about any of their big three, these big contracts, you know what they uh -huh. are. We've been talking about them all off season. Adam Schefter was just on ESPN radio on Unsportsmanlike this morning. Here's what he expects to happen from here. That's going to be the one that resets the quarterback market when it gets done, whether that's in season, unlikely or after the season, more likely. And when that gets done, when that guy's got no conditions attached to his contract and he can't be franchised and he can't be transition tagged and he can leave and he can open up the bidding for his services, Dak Prescott's going to get a deal north of $60 million a year. It might be more, way more. North of $60 million a year. Six, I'm sorry, what, uh, 60, 60, 60 million dollars a year. That's where this is headed. I'll take the over. The over on 60 million. No question about it. Darlington, I mean, wow. the bottom, I mean, here's the bottom line. I've been saying this for a while now, and you were an agent once for a little while, and I'm not, I've never been an agent, but I probably should have been. I would have been good at that. Je Jeff Darlington, the bottom line of it is this. Dak would be crazy to take a deal now, right? Like, everyone should be advising him. Don't even think about taking a contract now. He's about to become the most valuable thing you can possibly be in sports, which is an unrestricted right. free agent quarterback in his prime. And that's how we got to this point. You've got to remember this offseason, the thought was that the Cowboys, because they were up against it with the salary cap, because they couldn't sign free agents because of the salary cap number that Dak Prescott was coming into the season, he held all the cards. We've talked about the reasons, and that was why we thought that this deal would ultimately get done months ago. The closer every 
every hour, every day, every minute that we get closer to free agency, Dak holds the cards even more so. We have seen this before. We saw it with Kirk Cousins years ago. He played it perfectly. Dak Prescott now doing the exact same thing with the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, mm-hmm. Kirk Cousins also was a fourth round pick, right? And Dak was a fourth round pick. I mean, these things happen. And, and, and RC, look, Mike Tannenbaum and I were talking about this earlier this morning. Sometimes you say, take the deal because of risk of injury. Well, the last time when he played out his contract, he suffered a season ending injury and he still got all his money. Yeah. So, like, there's, yeah. there's no scenario in which he doesn't get it. Right. Yeah, no, Dak's about to get that bread. Like, we all know he's he's going to get the bag. It's just about how much money he's going to earn and where will he earn that money. Mm-hmm. And I think right now, if it was the agency of Tannenbaum and Greenberg, first off, that sounds extremely fiscally responsible. I just mm-hmm. want to say that. You <laughs> guys seem like you Very would understand how to take care of money and you <laughs> would do an amazing job. But... I could negotiate Dak Prescott's contract. My, yeah. my, my little niece can negotiate Dak Prescott's <laughs> mm-hmm. contract because Dak Prescott is going to be in a position where he's going to be able to get whatever he wants, and that's on the Dallas Cowboys. That is their doing. And so if I'm Dak Prescott, I don't sign a thing right now. I go into mm-hmm. this season. I play it out. I hope that my regular season is exactly like last year's. And next year, when he gets to free agency, either Jerry Jones and the Dallas Cowboys will pay him or there will be teams lined up they to will. give Dak Prescott got 60 million plus a year that's right like none of this means he has to leave there if he doesn't want to he he can if he decides oh i i love all the trappings of being the cowboys quarterback and all that kind of stuff yep. then he signs with them for all the money in the world if he says you know what it's really noisy in dallas and i'd like a little quieter place yeah have that i don't think the noise yeah, I mean, bothers if him. he wants to go quieter i mean you look at a place like vegas where they have Devonte adams jacoby myers brock bowers like all they need is a quarterback You know, the other way to look at this, too, Gree, that's really interesting to me. What about the biggest stage, the one right here in New York? Conceivably, both New York teams next year could be looking at quarterbacks and Malik Neighbors, Garrett Wilson. If you're Dak Prescott and you want to take your game to a whole other level in terms of playing on a national stage. And get killed because they don't have offensive linemen. What what do you think the New York Giants would do to take Dak Prescott out of Dallas and make him a Giant? So all this is fascinating, but none of it is happening right now. So, R.C., Answer this because you're the only one in this conversation who would know. Like, when, 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 when this is happening with your players, like, I mean, all the players on this team, like, they know Dak is contracts, CD, Micah Parsons. Like, yeah. does any of that matter? Does any, do any of these outstanding contract stories that we're going to talk about all the time on shows like this, will they have any impact on whether that team wins or loses games this year? I mean, if CD Lamb never goes to work. <laughs> yeah, have yeah. an impact on whether that or not this team have an impact. wins or loses. Yeah. Um, I don't necessarily, as long as everybody's there, we're independent contractors. Michael Parsons wants to be the best linebacker, rusher he can be. Uh, Dak Prescott wants to do the same. CeeDee mm-hmm. Lamb, if he's there, wants to do the same. And so they're going to be incentivized to play based on what they want to do from an individual goal standpoint. But you are sitting around that locker room thinking to yourself, didn't we say we was all in? Um, aren't we trying to win a Super Bowl? And we've Isn't done nothing. this what we're supposed to be doing after 28 years of not getting there? And you're saying that they aren't attempting to do that as an organization. They aren't attempting to do that at the executive level. And that does beg the question, mm-hmm. do I even want to be here in the next year if I'm Dak Prescott after hearing Mike Tannenbaum mention somewhere like Las Vegas? V- very quickly, Jeff. I'm sh- I mean, are we expecting C.D. Lamb to report? No. He, look, he's been, uh, oh, is he going to report that? We have to wait and see. I, I don't right. know the answer on that, but he has been throughout this offseason. I'm told the priority Missing. for the Cowboys. We talk about the big three. It has been CeeDee Lamb. I'm not saying that he's more important than Dak Prescott, but from a contract standpoint, he has been the priority in those negotiations. Priority. Wow. Well, I'm glad he's not on the back burner because I, I can't tell the difference between being on the back burner and being the priority because the Cowboys literally are the laughing stock of the NFL. I, I'm sorry. It, it's just ridiculous. Other teams, you know, they're sitting here. They're at least letting people know, uh, you know, what's going on. They're trying to work out deals. They, they at least have them in the building. CD Lamb, oh, we ain't done anything on that contract. Why? Why? Seriously, 
There is no excuse why you wait until, I don't know, because it doesn't sound like anything's getting started right now even. This is ridiculous. And then we as fans, or some of y'all, have the nerve to sit here and blame the quarterback. Oh, well, he's just greedy. He, he's being greedy. You know what? If I got treated the way that they get treated, that they can out here and see all these other people literally get paid without anything else, why should they turn around and get treated like shit and then we expect them to go ahead and do things to help the team out? Sorry, we're a joke. We're just a joke. Our front office is a joke. Have a good evening, good people. Um, be sure to check out Game Time Brian, who's not going to bed early tonight with the Angry Cowboy. You know, Angry Cowboy's got that deep voice. Kind of like you're listening to nothing but the best, like Law Nation. And we need to hear from all the voices of us Cowboy fans because, you know, <sighs> 